we will do simplex iterations in this video we have got the initial basic feasible solution table since the right hand side values are non negative so this table is feasible but in the objective function line we find that there are negative coefficients if you have negative coefficient in the objective function line that indicates that objective function value can be improved how negative coefficient improves that we will see while doing the iteration logically at this stage if you can relate these values with the logical meaning you know that product a gives you profit of 350 and product b gives you profit of 450 so you would obviously like to utilize the resources first in the product which is more profitable so that's why it is a convention that you choose the variable with most negative coefficient in the objective function line as entering variable in the basis that is equivalent to deciding that you are going to produce product b first so since y is having most negative coefficient that is minus 450 so this becomes the entering variable now when any variable enters into the basis some variable will be leaving the basis so either s1 or s2 will be leaving the variable uh, leaving the basis which one will leave again we can find it very logically when you are producing product b raw material 1 will be consumed at the rate of 30 units and you have 15 units of raw material 1 available so how much quantity of product a or product b you should produce so that this raw material gets exhausted if you have to find that you will have to divide 1500 by 30 so available quantity of raw material 1 is 1500 and for every unit of product b you require 30 units of uh, raw material 1 so you have to divide this by 30 and you get 50 that is you can produce 50 units of uh, product b with 1500 units of raw material 1 same way for raw material 2 if you do the computation you have 1800 units of raw material 2 available and per unit of product b you require 60 units of uh, raw material 2 so 1800 divided by 60 that is equal to 30 this 30 units of product b can be produced using 1800 units of raw material 2 now since in product b both the raw materials are required the moment you produce 30 units of product b raw material 2 gets exhausted so you will not be able to produce 31st unit of uh, product b you notice that product when you are choosing product b as the entering variable raw material 2 is getting exhausted first so in the simplex table next when you will be doing the iteration s2 will be the leaving variable so we take s2 as the leaving variable if we have to formulate some rule to find out entering variable and leaving variable it can be uh, as simple like this take the most negative coefficient in the objective function line and the variable for which that is the coefficient will be the entering variable so you get y as the entering variable then divide the right hand side values 
by the corresponding values in the column of entering variable that is 30 and 60 that is we divided 1500 by 30 and 1800 by 60 and take the variable which is giving you the minimum quotient so the minimum is 30 and that is coming with S2 so we take S2 as the leaving variable there are some terms like this column which you are taking as entering this column is called pivot column and uh, the row which is the which is representing the leaving variable that row is called pivot row and uh, this cell which is on the pivot row as well as pivot column that is called pivot element now let us do the iteration we will be preparing another simplex table and for that you have to write all the variables so we write here P, X, Y, S1, S2 and uh, right hand side values. And uh, the basis here you will have P and uh, as we have seen that y will, uh, y will be entering the basis and uh, S2 will be leaving the basis so in the basis we will have uh, S1 and instead of S2 we will have Y and uh, we have to fill this table For filling the table we will do elementary row operations on these rows which we have in the previous table and uh, what we want to achieve since uh, our new basis is S1 and Y and you know that the basic variable will be present in only one equation and uh, that too with plus one coefficient so we will just uh, fill some of the columns right now though these values will be coming after doing the computation but just for the guideline uh, let us fill some of the columns which you can do without doing any calculations say P P is here so P will be present in only one equation that too for P so the coefficient of uh, P in P line will be 1 and in rest of the lines it will be 0 similarly coefficient of S1 in S1 line will be 1 because S1 is in the basis so coefficient of uh, S1 in the S1 line that is here will have 1 and at rest of the places like here and here the coefficient will be 0 so we take 0 similarly the other basic variable is y so coefficient of y in y line that is here will be 1 and at rest of the places like in this 
equation and in this equation it will be 0. So we should do elementary row operations in such a way that we get these values. At rest of the places like in this column and in this column and this right hand side we will be getting some different value that is okay but uh, the elementary row operation should be done in such a way that you get 100 0, 0 here, 0, 0, 001 here and 0, 010 0 here. If you recall elementary row operations are such operations where if you multiply a row by some constant, if you multiply another row by some other constant and then you add these two rows or subtract these two rows then that doesn't change the property of the system. So we should, we can multiply the rows here from in this table by constants and uh, then we can add the rows or subtract to get 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 in this new table. If we can do that then that is the iteration because uh, we are able to uh, make y as a basic uh, variable and uh, s2 we are able to remove out of the basis. So the guiding rule for doing the iterations will be that we need to get values something like this and if you see this column 100 in the previous table and in this table it is 100 so there is no change here change is happening only in this y column because y entered the basis s1 column also remains same that is 0 1 0 S2, okay, it was 0, 0, 001. Now, whatever value comes here, that is not a problem for us. So, we need to focus on this particular column because we want 0, 0, and 1 here. So, one thing is simple. Since we want 1, and that is what we need to do, that look at the pivot row. Pivot row was uh, this S2 row, and uh, we want to get a 1 here. That is this 60 has to change to 1. This 0 remains there and uh, this 0 is also same. So our requirement is that uh, this 60 should become 1 and the best way to do that is divide this row by 60. So when you divide you get 0, 30 by 60 will be uh, 0.5 then 60 by 60 is 1 then 0 by 60 is 0 so that's right then 1 by 60 will be 1 by 60 we write here then 1800 by 60 is 30 so what we did in this we divided S2 row by 60 to get this row. Similarly, we will be doing some elementary row operations to fill this row in the new table and also the P line. Let us do first for this S1 line. Here if you compare this new table with the previous table you find that one major change which is happening that uh, you require a zero here here anyway you have one and uh, at other places like at this and uh, this place whatever value comes that is okay so since you want uh, 0 and earlier it was 30 this can happen only when from 30 30 is subtracted so one guideline we can see that from s1 row something has to be subtracted we should get another row where uh, for uh, this place you have 30 and uh, that 
can be obtained by multiplying this y row at this y row you have one here so if you multiply this particular row which you have got actually by dividing the s2 row by 60 so if you multiply this row by 30 you will be getting since here you have 1 so 1 multiplied by 30 will be 30 and when you subtract that new row from uh, s1 row you will be getting uh, 0 here so uh, that is the rule you take the value from the pivot column in the row for which you want to do the iteration that is in the pivot column you have 30 for the row s1 and then you multiply the uh, y row that is the uh, pivot uh, row which you are having in the next table so you multiply this by 30 and then whatever you are getting you subtract that from the original row so exactly we are going to do uh, something like this uh, we will multiply the y row row y by 30 this 30 we have got from the pivot column in the s1 row and uh, this will be whatever we get this will be subtracted from the old s1 row and uh, this will be actually giving you the new s1 row we will be getting this row new s1 row by doing this elementary row operation so let us do the calculation this is y row we multiply it by 30 so multiply it by 30 you will be getting 0 30 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 15 then 30 0 30 multiplied by 1 by 60 is 0.5 and 30 multiplied by 30 is 900 this has to be subtracted from the s1 row we have brought the s1 row here so let us subtract uh, these two rows that is s1 row and this so you get 0 minus 0 is 0 50 minus 15 is 35 30 minus 30 is 0 1 minus 0 is 1 0 minus 0 0.5 is minus 0 0.5 and 1500 minus 900 is 600 so we will be putting this value in the table similarly for the objective function line we will be taking instead of s1 we will take uh, p so old p line will be taken and uh, row y uh, instead uh, we will be keeping the row y because that is the uh, pivot row uh, you have a 1 here that is a big advantage and instead of 30 we will be taking the value from the uh, pivot row and uh, uh, we will be taking the value from the pivot column in the p line that is minus 450 so we will multiply this by minus 450 and uh, that will be giving us the new p line so let us do that iteration in the uh, again and uh, fill the p line you pause the video here look into all these calculations do it on your own and then fill the table we get the table like this and uh, since you have a negative coefficient here this is not an optimum solution you can take x as the entering variable and do the iteration again to improve the profit value and we will discuss about this in the next video